Thanks for having me. Welcome to uh, Bald Guys with Beards and... Well, I, you had glasses on. I'm still wearing them. Uh, I tried to mix it up You're thinning bit. your face. You're yeah. trying to, for the well, camera. Well, I didn't want to pick your style. <laughs> but it is Brokers and Bars Getting Beers with Johnny McDonald. It certainly is. And we're in the 19083, dude. Yeah, H-Town and the Hizzy. I mean, this is convenient for me, so I thank you. No problem. It's mm -hmm. convenient and comfortable for me. So I, got, I have a little history with the McGillicuddy's family of bars. I know you have bigger history. Um, you know the guy. We got in a little uh, tradition with our boys back a couple years ago when they won the first championship. Wow. And we were going in Wayne. And, um, that well, the first championship was what, 85? 85, 85, 85, 85, 85. G-Town. But, um, you know, I started in 94, graduated in 98, so that was my first big run. And I still think it was the best one, having beaten the Tar Heels and just the build-up. sort of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, the one against Michigan was a sleeper. But, um, yeah, that floor was moving. It was so loud in there. But, uh, in you know, Wayne. Yeah, in Wayne. Yeah. And we won the first, won the second. So, you know, we're all wearing the same outfits, unwashed, you know, going to the same bar. Ritual. So that was my history. And then Tommy, who you'll, you can tell the audience about Tommy and the, and the history here, uh, Jay Wright was doing a show for a little stint here, which was pretty cool. He'd be perched up top. But I think now you win two championships, his, uh, his time's a premium, so I think he's not doing the show anymore. But yeah, it was a great venue. So maybe they'll pull him back. I'm sure they got him down at the Wells Fargo no doubt. sound stage. Yeah, a little bit of production <laughs> venue. Uh, but Tommy wanted to make sure I mentioned, too, the live music scene. I don't know if you ever checked it out here. So they're This doing is a local for me. Yeah. I mean, this is this is my local. I, I <clears throat> work for uh, Mr. Thornton and Tommy Jr., a.k.a. Thunder, when I was 17. I was a doorman in a bar back here at, when it was Brownies. Really? Brownies on Brookline Boulevard in 90? 89, 90. Okay. Yeah. Funny story. You can edit it out, maybe. Probably won't. <laughs> Got busted having a keg party at my parents' house, four doors up from where you currently live in Havertown. Really? My parents were uh, in Ocean City. I had to study for finals. Uh -huh. Threw a kegger. Got busted. Had to do youth diversionary program. So I basically That's a very had to go formal name for, for kids that a, get busted yeah. drinking underage. And the trip was, I did it at the Lutheran Church, in the okay. basement of the Lutheran Church, yeah. four blocks up from here. Okay. And I would ride my Schwinn after Youth Diversionary Program yeah. to Brownie's Pub to bounce. Banana seat, basket on the Schwinn, or just rocking? No, more beach cruiser. Beach cruiser. Yeah, okay. beach cruiser. So I, I'll, from that story, what I want to know is how'd you do on the final? Flying colors. <laughs> Good Aced man. it. Good man. Aced it. So that start a trend. That's that's the prep. You yeah. know. So yeah. next next test. All right. Need the kegger and eat the. You know, gotta kind of like the Villanova story. That's the cadence, Didn't wash right? my clothes. There you go. There Stayed you go. stinky. Nice. Aced it. And so for the audience, you you mentioned a couple names that are important. Who are those folks? So those folks are SEPTA. Right. Well, that's loud. the beauty. That's yeah. the beauty of being in a community uh, uh, establishment. So. So Tom Thornton, Thornton. And, the, and the Thornton family are, um, are uh, you know, Haverford Township, uh, seminal human beings. Got it. Um, and uh, thankfully, dear friends of my family. Okay. Uh, one of my dad's best, best buddies. That's cool. So, yeah. So um, the short story about J.D. McGillicuddy's, if you ask my dad, although he's, he's deceased uh, since 2001, but Tom Thornton would back this up is um, he always said, Tom, next time you open a bar, I need you to name it after me, or I want you to name it after me. Kind of, because that's the kind of my dad, the guy my dad was. Um, so Mr. Thornton called my dad and said, hey, I'm opening a new brand. I'm still running with the brownies, but we're gonna open this new thing. We're gonna call it J.D. McGillicuddy's, uh, no, J.D. McDonald's after you. And my dad said, oh, that's cool. Where is it? And he said, it's in Havertown, right on County Line Road. Uh, on this side of Delaware County, across mm -hmm. 
Lower Marion, Montgomery County. My dad said, not a chance. You're not naming a bar in Havertown after me. At the time, my dad was the uh, Ninth Ward Commissioner in Haverford Township and ultimately for 27 years was the Township Commissioner. Okay. Uh, also a master plumber. I mean, that was his, that was his career, but politically he was... He was a community activist, community servant right. as a commissioner. And he said, that's bad, bad idea yeah. to name a bar after a commissioner. No doubt. So it turned into McGillicuddy's because when my dad would take all the Thornton kids, and there's like 77 of them, um, out on the boat, water skiing and stuff, they used to refer to him as Captain McGillicuddy. So J.D. McGillicuddy's is what the name became. And, and, and uh, Jay is Jack. Jack, John Dennis John McDonald. Dennis. And I'm J.D. and John Dennis McDonald Jr. When I was born, everybody started calling him Jack for whatever reason, when, and started calling me John. <laughs> John got lost. Okay. Yeah. I so, like John. Yeah, it works. It's mm-hmm. my name. It's what my mother calls me. So, from a uh, personal accomplishment perspective, 40 under 40, you were. Yeah. So are you, are you, well, nom- are you nominated for uh, under 47 now? I only have I I only have nine I have seven days. Really? Yeah. Where are you gonna be celebrating? Um, home. Okay. Yeah. No plans? No trips? No. Okay. No. Uh, my, my wife actually got me tickets. She got me uh, four tickets to to the Eagles game. Okay. So that's where I'm celebrating. Uh, who do they have then? Uh, Detroit on the 27th. Oh, that should be a smoke show. Should be a good day. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it. Thanks. So you want to, let's uh, audible the business. Sure. So what I want to uh, learn a little bit about is the where the worlds collide between Wiker and I'm, um, I think it's a phenomenal branding. Rocking it for you. Um, Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah. This, is the old, this is the old school, yeah. McDG. Okay. And that's well, just you the, know, uh, I think I, I see the progression, old to new. And I want to let everyone know this is a slim fit. That oh, I'm rocking. very slim. A very, that's a and medium. It, and it's roomy. It's a medium it's slim. A, it's, <laughs> extra small slim. Um, so the guy's chiseled. <laughs> Courtney was checking me out when I changed, by the way. She's back there blushing. Yeah, get her. Um, so, what I want to find out from a business perspective is where the worlds of Weikert and Onion Flats collide. So, and, and how, you know, how one builds the other or collaborates with the other or just, you know, where they collide and, and grow together. So, or is there one? so starting newest to old, uh, Weikert, I, I joined ranks with Weikert two and a half years ago um, after 13 years of being licensed. Licensed in 12 and a half years. Licensed in uh, 2004. A um, couple of years at Proof Fox Roach. Yep. Um, 11 years with Space and Company. Um, and then. In 2017, uh, beginning of 2017, made the shift to Weikert. Um, why? Because Weikert uh, ha- didn't have any presence in Center City, Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and we were really looking to generate a new move uh, for our team. Um, and Weikert offered us a lot of back end corporate support, um, really fine, fine structure, and uh, great brand, although no presence in Philadelphia. Right. So I partnered up with them, opened a center city brick and mortar location, mm-hmm. and it's really kind of taken off like wildfire. Um, it, they, 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 they've been very, very, very supportive. So that's Weikert. Step before that is, you know, six years ago, I, I created a team, the McDonald Group. And for, I'd say, three to three and a half years of that, Team, I kind of treated it like a paper route. You know, it was. It, it, I, I was. I was battling with. Is this the identity that I really want to have? Is this, I'm. I'm skilled and uh, experienced in negotiating real estate transactions, both uh, residential, commercial, industrial, mm-hmm. really development. Um, but I'm still struggling with the uh, moniker of being a realtor. Mm-hmm. And then I got real about it and turned that paper route into a business and and uh, develop the business into what the McDonald Group is today at Weikert Realtors. And the original step was, of course, Onion Flats. Yeah. Uh, 2001, my dad passed away. I was in San Diego for a decade. 
Um, I owned a record label and a production management, music management firm. Because um, you went to show, San Diego State. Right? I did, yeah. I'm an Aztec. Um, had a uh, had a had a deal with Viacom. We we did a TV show with VH1. Uh, managed a stable of bands. One of them by the name of Soul Cracker. Um, really good kind of beach rock punk ska band. Okay. Um, uh, on the Warp Tour for many years. Um, and my dad passed away. And then 9/11 happened. 2001, I found myself just in kind of the most heartless, soulless industry when 3,000 miles away from my family. Right. Um, and I and I and I basically I called my brothers and I said, I'm thinking about coming home, and they said, Great, we got a job for you. And Pat and Tim had started this company called Onion Flats in 1997, so three four years earlier, uh, and they essentially offered me a job. It took me about a year to wind things up, uh, so I moved back, and um, the job they gave me was sorting trash and digging ditches, which is the job I had working for my dad summers and weekends <laughs> all through high school. Right. So Onion Flats progressed into the point of, I'm sick of doing the work that I did when I was a 15, 16 year old digging ditches. We're, we're doing development projects in these brand new emerging neighborhoods like Northern Liberties in 99, Fishtown in 2001. Um, and so I said, I'm going to get a real estate license. And I got a real estate license and uh, took the class in 2003, got the, got the paper in 2004. And again, represented a lot of people, friends, family, Onion Flats, another couple of developers. But really not until I'd say 2015, <clears throat> 10 years later, did I really start treating it like a, like a legitimate business and a career. Wow. Because I was always had my foot in doing the developmental stuff and um, doing the design build stuff. So I've been around a long time. That's amazing, yeah. But, but I, I, and, and since 2015, I've built the most amazing group of uh, individuals I could ever want to work with. Uh, so, so that phone call, West Coast to East Coast, is really what started the whole passion project of real estate. I, I did not know that. So like the Prudential, the Space, the Wiker, that was all after the Onion Flat, but the call from yeah. San Diego to, to Philly. Yeah. And my brother's saying, come on out. You know, come Amazing. on out. We got, we got work for you. And it wasn't about we got work for you. It was about we want you. Yeah. Like, we miss you. You miss us. Right. My dad was 62 years old. Real young. Right? So it kind of rocked all of our worlds. And it's, and it's, been, it's been 19 years, you know, 18 years. And uh, there's this whole other offshoot tie back to the Thorntons. Literally, um, he, he passed in March of 2001. We set up a foundation in his name because, again, he was a... He was a pretty seminal figure in, yeah. in Delaware County and uh, and uh, Haverford Township specifically, not for any other reason than he was just like a father and a coach and a and a um, and a and a, and a good neighbor, and right. kind of a just a hardworking guy that would help you out. He had a famous line: "I'll give you the shirt off my back." No pun intended. Yeah. Give you the shirt off my back, but don't try to take it from me. You know. <laughs> And, and that's kind of how he raised us, and, yeah. and uh, so he had a lot of a lot of friends, and helped a lot of people along the way. And as a result, literally within a day or two of his passing, we were in California in Berkeley, where where he ultimately had a, uh, a stroke and died. Um, and we set up a foundation, like on the back of a napkin. My brother Tim said, "You know what? We we need to memorialize him." And within a few phone calls in a couple of weeks, we had a 501c3 set up. Um, and Mr. Thornton, Tom Thornton, the owner of Brownies, the owner of McGillicuddy's, uh, he was the first president of the John D. McDonald Memorial Foundation, established in 2001. And we had our first event June 2001, a golf outing, three months after my dad died, and raised, I don't remember, that year, $20,000, $25,000. And last June, we had our 19th. So coming up in June, it'll be our 20th anniversary. And then at a point, probably five years ago, Mr. Thornton said, you're it, Johnny. Now I'm the president of the foundation. <laughs> and I didn't have a choice. 
So that that kind of ties it all back together. Yeah. I mean, my dad brought us into this business, brought me into this business by teaching me how buildings go on the face of the earth, starting underground with foundations and and um, and, and underground plumbing. You know, just the mechanical systems, and then he kind of. In a, in a sense, passed the torch to my brother Patrick, who's a master plumber, like mm -hmm. my dad was. Yep. My brother Tim, who's a master architect and a master builder uh, and a plumber. Uh, my brother Mike is in the development construction business. He's on the West Coast. Um, my sister is an RN and, uh, and me. So it's kind of, you know, he got us started. He gave us all the tools mm -hmm. that we could have ever used. Uh, and, and he kind of, he went off into the into the uh, ether and um, and he set us up to set us up with more you know with, with, with just the ability to succeed and the work ethic right no matter what you do just do your best right so anyway that's well, interesting. nostalgic and it's nostalgic to be here too no without a doubt I was gonna say I mean a lot of the venues I picked were just you know because they were trendy or popular the truck meant something to me when I when I filmed there because of the venue and the history and they were shuttering it. Yeah, yeah, that but, was a great episode. Well, Sanders. thank you. But this, yeah, this, I, I, it's good for you to tell that story so they know this is more than just a venue. It's there's a history behind it. And yeah. It's personal. So that's it's cool. personal. It's family. And by the way, if you're coming to Delco, this place is trendy and hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, for... let, don't let these two guys fool you. It's trendy and hip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right.